G'day folks, well, for this afternoon's little equipment autopsy we have a turbine jet engine combustor. Now this is off a, I believe it was a Rolls Royce Viper, uh, possibly, probably an Armstrong Sidley built industrial version. This was donated by a friend of mine, uh, a YouTuber by the name of Leo Kim Video. Many of you would have heard or seen of his videos in my previous ones. Um, He's a good friend of mine and uh, he decided to donate this as a uh, example of what I can work off or a, something to learn from as far as jet turbo combustors go because I'm building one out of a turbocharger and I've learned a lot from this as well as YouTuber Agent JZ who's a Canadian jet engine technician and he is well worth subscribing to if you have even the slightest interest in jet engines or anything mechanical I've spent days watching his stuff over and over again and it's awesome so yeah I'll post links in the description and uh, yeah let's have a look at this thing because uh, this is what makes a jet engine work you've got the compressor up this end the compressor's there stuffs it into here you've got fuel being injected combustion taking place and hot gas is coming out through this nozzle into what's known as a nozzle box which are a fixed set of vanes around the outside of the jet engine or the outside of the inner casing the uh, turbine casing and uh, behind that is the turbine blades and the blades are actually propelled by the high temperature high velocity gases coming out it's uh, yeah a turbine um, I'm not going to go into too much detail but I'm going to show you what's inside it, starting with the top. As you can see, there's a fuel nozzle. There's no igniter in this one. I don't have an igniter for it. But that there is a fuel sprayer. It's a fuel nozzle. That probably breaks out at about 150 psi. I haven't put enough pressure to it to get it to do that. I tried using my 100 psi air hose just to get the thing to break out and actually spray and it didn't do it so it takes a fair bit of back pressure just to get this thing to actually start spraying it's like a diesel injector it takes so much pressure to get it to break out and actually inject so nice bit of gear not so useful for my oil burner projects like I thought but that's essentially it um, obviously there's some locking bolts that are missing from here that lock it into the uh, compressor housing but that's the uh, air inlet end let's take the nozzle off the outlet nozzle and that discharges straight into a, a, a set of fixed stators essentially nozzle the nozzle box um, yeah look at agent jay-z's video for details on that one but there's a set of six um, fixed veins in the line of the nozzles discharge and behind that are the actual turbine blades that get spun by the high temperature high velocity gases and uh, there's also some little bleed holes in the outside of it. I'm not sure if that's for air going in or out, but yeah. Mostly made out of Inconel or some high, sometimes high grade stainless steel, but usually Inconel. And being the high temperature end of things, I'd say it's Inconel. a bolt storage unit for its own bolts. So there's a few, a few loose bolts floating around inside but it's its own bolts. But as you can see this is the combustor. 
I believe it's also made out of high grade stainless steel or Inconel, not 100% sure. Down inside, ooh, look at that. The fuel nozzle pokes in through there, through that small hole in the center. And there's also a set of vanes, like a fan blade, a swirler vein assembly, to swirl the air that comes in and create a vortex of fuel and air that makes its way down here and burns up gradually. So te technically you shouldn't have any flame hitting the uh, nozzle box, otherwise you'll end up melting them. That's really bad. But yeah, various air holes in the sides here. Various diffusers down inside. If the camera won't freak out, you might be able to see it. Yeah, it's still very dark. But yeah, I've sort of got to replicate this when I build my turbo jet engine, turbocharger jet. Just start off with small holes or an air inlet, small holes, and just get bigger. Uh, there are calculators online to work it out, but yeah. There's a few different ways of doing it. Now these are flame sharing ports. They connect, interconnect to other combustors, just like this one. But they don't all have igniters on them, so you get flame sharing between each one and they ignite each other and keep each, keep each other ignited. So in case one does actually go out momentarily because of maybe an air bubble or something in the fuel sprayer, It'll reignite on its own because the next one, the one next to it's burning and it's sharing its own flames to the other one. It's kind of a redundancy system, I guess. And inside the outer casing, there are some scorch marks, but it certainly doesn't get as hot as you'd think. Given the amount of heat that goes on in there, the airflow over this keeps it cold. Without airflow, this thing would probably melt, which is a bad thing. But... That's why you don't run them outside of a, well, working jet engine. That's why I can't really run it properly outside of a jet engine. It'll melt. It's not made for it. So, yeah. Tonight's little rambly video. Can you see down in there? Let's see if I can get that flashlight. Jay did a damn good video on these things anyway, so you can see the swirl of veins in there. And yeah, fuel nozzle comes in this end, igniter normally goes in through there. There we go. You can see the swirl of veins right at the end. And there's various little diffuser lips. It's very thin sheet metal lips that have been TIG welded to the inside. Around the outside there. It's kind of cool stuff. It's really cool technology. So yeah. Just thought I'd do this little video for this afternoon and give you something to, uh... Oh, there we go. That's the last screw. These ones here are actually to align the combustor inside the housing. They just fit inside there and screw in from there. So there should be three of these, which there are. Yep. And they're essentially locating dowels come screws. There's no cross drill in them though, I'm surprised. It should be lock wired. But I'm guessing because it's not an aviation engine it doesn't have to be. And there's tons of different numbers on these things. Tons of them, there's all kinds of markings and things from various rebuilds and inspectors and you name it. But no, that's, that's kind of cool. Again, there's a flame sharing ports, that's igniter port. Fuel nozzle comes in here along with a bit of uh, air from the compressors and more air comes in through these holes, these holes, these ones and these ones 
and eventually you get a controlled temperature flame coming out the arse end of it which is not so hot that it melts the nozzles or anything like that and that's always good so you don't want melting nozzles on your jet engine thanks for watching and stay tuned for uh, a bit of turbojet project work when I get the time